NASA's Artemis crew is headed to the moon in 2024, but before they lift off, they stopped by KCAL News for Java with Jamie. I got to speak with the team about space exploration, a visit to the Griffith Observatory, and why they want this mission to bring hope to humanity. These are the four astronauts selected to travel to the moon on a 10-day mission in 2024. Thank you for having Java with Jamie today. It turns out these pioneers and innovators are just like us. How do you guys take your coffee? <laughs> Most important, I like, I need coffee. That there is coffee. That there is coffee, and then we can talk about the details. So just black. I've got you are the black order. Black yeah. coffee. Okay, everybody else seems to have other things. I yeah. went for, uh, it's going to be a long day today, so I went for a triple latte, because I think you need that extra shot to get triple. you over the hump. Strong play. Wow. Yeah. It's like morning anchors. You, you, that's what we do. <laughs> Let's see how this is in about 20 minutes. <laughs> the astronauts, Commander Reed Weissman, Mission Specialist Christina Hammock-Cook, Pilot Victor Glover, and Mission Specialist Jeremy Hansen are the next generation of explorers. You're the first person of color to be able to go up. You're the first woman. What is that like for the two of you, mm. to be first? Uh, you know, it, it's, it's an interesting um, aspect of this mission, and I think it's important to know that this didn't just happen. You know, they didn't cultivate this crew to, to be these people. We cultivated an office and an organization by making decisions years ago mm -hmm. that we would include. One of NASA's core values now is inclusion. It's the fifth of our core values. And so because of challenging leadership decisions to be intentional, our office now represents our countries and our planet. And so I love the way you said it. If you just reached in and grabbed four people, it would look about like this. And so I want people to know most of all, most important, this crew is gonna do our best to get the mission done and make you proud. Uh, but it's important for kids to also be able to see a piece of themselves in what we're doing. And that inspiration is, uh, is, is very important. Yeah. We like to say it's not necessarily any one person's individual accomplishment, but the real thing to celebrate is just what he said, it, that we made a decision that we are going to explore for all, by all. And if we're not doing that, we're not really answering humanity's call to explore. Like you said, that's what we love celebrating. And we're going to be more successful as a result, taking everyone who wants to contribute, anyone working hard, they're welcome on board. We're not here because of the way any one of us looks. And one of my favorite things about this crew is if you take myself, your hometown hero, Victor, and Jeremy, and you add up the three of our experience, the only thing that we can top her on is the three of us combined have five more days in space. <laughs> but Once you're up at the moon, at one point, if you're going around, you're not going to see Earth. Are you prepared for that moment? That is going to be crazy. I actually yeah. haven't thought about it from that perspective, that there is a, mm -hmm. it, it won't be very long, but there might be a 45 minute period where we don't get to see home. Mm -hmm. That's wild. I'm glad I could break that news to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you. It's not the US or North America, or the country sending you guys up. Really, this is an exploration for all of Earth. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. how we hope that it is regarded, for mm -hmm. sure. Yes. Yeah. It's on the on the technical side. We have uh, parts of this machine are are built all over the world. We have a, a, a European service module built by Airbus. Uh, right now, we have Lockheed Martin and Boeing are pri pretty much our prime U.S. contractors. But that's on the technical side. And then on the inspiration side, it'll be really neat to get an opportunity to unite the world for a, a few moments. But I also like to say learning about ourselves. I think one of the reasons we explore is to learn about ourselves. We learn what's important to us, what we need, and we learn about our home planet's context in the universe. I guess each one of you, do you mind telling me what your hope or inspiration is mm -hmm. moving forward? It is so easy to, to talk to your friends and to really grow this internal distaste or dislike for a certain person because of their party or what they represent. But I would just hope that everybody from, you know, everybody starting moving forward can just take a second to pause and know that this is a human being. I guarantee they're waking up every day trying to do what is right for the nation, for their people. They're, you know, when we wake up every day, we're coming in as a team trying to get the job done, trying to do what is right. And it doesn't matter what part you're playing, whether it's the, the smallest part or the largest part, every part there is, is inspirational, it's very purposeful, it's very meaningful. And just wake up and try to do your best every day. Human behind the lens taking a picture of planet Earth, and that means we're taking a picture of every single person that we've ever known, every single human that has ever that is living and they're all in the same place on a universal scale I think this mission specifically is a symbol of what we can do when humans decide to work together and tackle the challenges that face us as people 
And I love the saying when we not just put aside our differences, but when we bring them together. There's a saying that I grew up hearing all the time, love covers a multitude of sins. When we bring together people of different capability and different experience, we, we kind of create a grid where we support one another. My weaknesses are shored up by Christina's awesomeness and vice versa. And I think that we need to see more of those kinds of wins. And so the peace between our countries and, and, and the peace that I hope this provides, even if it's just a brief one for those 10 days, shows people that we can do that. We can do big technical, political, diplomatic things. We can also do the small things right here in our own communities. So I hope it's inspiring for people right here at home. The three teenage kids and you know, they, they talk about some of the issues they're learning about, things that concern them, climate change and war and and they're big problems, they're global problems, and they require global solutions. And what we really want from the Artemis program is to show humanity that we can do big things if we set big goals and we, we all come together. And that it, it could be possible for us to get eight billion people rowing in the same direction to solve some of these, these big problems. We witnessed how that hope is already manifesting itself in the next generation when our assignment manager, Mark Liu, brought his four-year-old daughter, Ellie, to meet her space heroes. Wait, wait, Ellie, I'm gonna turn it this way. Now hold it right there. But while visiting celebrity-filled LA, the astronauts are a little more anonymous. I mean, like, what was the part name? Griffith, Griffith Park. Park. And uh, up to the observatory. Oh, just that one, little Griffith yeah. Park. <laughs> yeah, it's just beautiful, and the view is spectacular. And we were up on the observatory, and there was uh, a gentleman up there. He just had a telescope that he had set up, and he was showing people the moon. It was just neat. That was really cool. Oh my God! Did people recognize you at the observatory? No. No. Not. No one did. We That's don't. the best part of these we... outfits. If you take the jackets off, we're normal people. It's so great. <laughs> the group will lift off from Florida, but come back to Earth here in Southern California. And while up in space, they look to SoCal as their North Star. What's so neat about Los Angeles is, first of all, look at Los Angeles from space, from low Earth orbit. It is ridiculous. It is ridiculous to see this city from low Earth orbit. What makes it um, ridiculous? The size of it is incredible. It borders right up against the Pacific Ocean. You've got the tan of the desert, the mountains. You've got the blue of the Pacific Ocean. You can even see the gray color of all the, the skyscrapers and all the urban development here. Uh, but one of the wildest things is that you can see the air traffic coming into LAX with their, their trails in the sky. And there's just dozens of them all coming in from the north and south and from the east and from the west. And you can see all those trails getting painted as these, these airplanes are coming into LAX. And you're like, I've connected to there you know I remember my vacation to Hawaii that I went through LAX and you're like all oh, these people I wonder what they're doing are they commuting to work are they they live there are they going on a vacation that's pretty amazing and how cool is that it's we're providing inspiration and wonder to these astronauts who are up in space looking down on us it was just my we're like little me. ants just you know going about our days and they're kind of like the ideal humans aren't they they're like <laughs> bringing a message of unity and yes. peace and this ideal society as a, a world and not just a community or a country and I, I just love Christina too talking about how space exploration for her is not just about bringing that hope and inspiration to the world which is the big picture but also learning about yourself and how learning about yourself and growing and being better contributes back to humanity in a way um, that is important yeah you know? and I love that there might be someone watching right now who set up a telescope and has no That's, idea that the astronauts look through his telescope That's I said did you guys tell him at least who you are and they said no hopefully he watches the show and knows that we really had a good time meeting him <laughs> if you're watching let us know yeah. come in the station we, we would love to talk to you um, one of the other cool things is that they with starting in Florida they're hoping that all of their families jump in the car and drive because the 10-day mission it will take them about 10 days to drive from uh, from Florida to Southern California just as long as they're in space wow. so they thought everybody could kind of they can be up. looking down on them right amazing yeah what a great interview